Him. I'd rather have Jesus than anything and everything. I'd rather have Jesus than money. I'd rather have Jesus than power and fame. I'd rather have Jesus than friends, family. Amen. Amen. I'd rather just have food. Jesus. There's coming a day uh, when we will all go into the presence of God in the mm-hmm. room. We're, there's coming a day when we will all stand before God. Mm-hmm. And we will be in His holy presence. And so that you are not uh, taken off guard, when you go into the throne room, there are seraphim angels All right. mm-hmm. who just say hope 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 when they look at God and look at his glory they just say whoa hope when they look at what he's created the earth they say he's hope when they look at the stars and the, and the moon and the sun they say hope when they look at how he is without sin they say hope and, and when they look around and, 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 they, and they see his majesty, they just say, oh, holy. Mm-hmm. Holy, holy, holy mm-hmm. is the Lord God mm-hmm. almighty, mm-hmm. which was, which is, and is to come. Mm-hmm. They just, day after day, hour after hour, week after week, they just say, holy. They're, they're so amazed at his, at his holiness that all they can say is, Oh, oh, oh. And they say that, that thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. You're the only one, God, who is worthy to receive glory, to receive honor, to receive power. For thou hast created all things, and for, for thy pleasure they are and were created. They are so impressed by who God is. And the only thing that they can say is, when I think about myself, I say, well, what would, what would it take for me just to be holy? And then, to be holy means to be separate. Okay? God is holy. For me to be holy, I, I've got to take all of the sin out of me. So, for me to be holy, I, I've got to, I've, I've, Lord, take this from me. Amen? Lord, take this from me. Amen? Because what I'm asking God to do is make me more like Him. Amen. To remove the sin that's inside me. Mm-hmm. And not only does He not like it, but I don't like it either. Okay. And Lord, make me holy. Mm-hmm. And when you come in, into the very presence and, 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 and just for a second, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah in your Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 6. A prophet of God who, who got the opportunity to have a vision of the heavens. He just had a vision. Isaiah chapter 6. And in verse 2 it says, and I still hear Bibles turning, so when I hear Bibles turning, I, I slow down a little bit. But a lot of you guys got computers nowadays. <laughs> Just sit right through. Some of us are old fashioned. We got this, we got to hunt it down. Right? First thing I remember is, is, is the Isaiah in the Old Testament? Right. Or is it the New Testament? <laughs> then when I figure out it's in the Old Testament, right now I've got to find it. <laughs> and the Old Testament is bigger than the New Testament. Yeah. So the past, why do you go to the Old Testament? Why can't you give us something easy like the New Testament? <laughs> but the Bible says, and in, in, in verse 2 it says, and it stood, he, he's, he's, he's got, he has a vision. Above it stood the seraphim. 
Am I in the right place? Yeah. Uh -huh. Each one had six wings. Uh -huh. Now this is an angel that stays in the presence of God day and night. And this seraphim, this angel has six wings. And with twain, he covered his face. So two of the wings cover his face. Right? And with two, it covers his feet. Amen? And with two, it flies. Now, that seems strange to me. <laughs> but I don't mind because wherever Jesus is. Amen. <laughs> so, so when you get to heaven and you see this for yourself, don't be scared. You, you are in the right place. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and verse 3 says, And one cried unto another and said, What? Holy, holy, holy. holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord of what? Oh. And the whole earth is full of his what? Oh. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him and cried, and the house was filled with snow. Remember what we said that the angels in the presence of God, the seraphim, all they can do is look around and say, Oh, holy, oh, oh, holy, oh. holy. And the Bible goes on to say, this this Isaiah, the verse 5, he says. When he looked at the holiness, and then he thought of himself, right? Because here's the thing. When we go before God, or if an angel was to appear right now, the thing that we are going to be concerned with is our sin. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be concerned with our, 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 our righteousness, our holiness, because the, the angel or God is so holy. It, 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 you're going to think to yourself, oh man, oh my God, I need to, I need to get rid of this. But, but this is what he said. He says, verse 5, and he said, Whoa, it's me. It's me. For I am what? I'm done. I'm done. Because I am a man of unclean what? Yes. In other words, there's things that he said that he shouldn't be saying. Right. And remember, we said when you're in the presence of holiness, your sin is going to come out. Yeah. And he said, Oh my, my goodness, my. When I open my mouth, I say things that I shouldn't say. And the Bible goes on to say, and I dwell in the midst of people who have unclean lips. So even the people I'm around. Yes, yes, yes. And my eyes have seen the king and the Lord of So he was undone because he saw his sin. My sin was that, what he said is my sin is I have unclean lips. And, 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 he's, and, and he's trembling, and, and the Bible says, verse 6, and one of the seraphim, one, then flew one of the seraphims, and to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the thongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sins are heard. So if it wasn't for that seraphim grabbing a coal from the altar and putting it on his tongue, he couldn't even stay in the presence. Mm -hmm. Holy. 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 Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. And this guy, Isaiah, was a good guy. But yet still, when he got into the presence, when he got into the very presence of God, he, he, he was undone. He's not the only one that, 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 that feels some kind of way when he got into the presence of, of the Lord. The Bible says that when Moses was tending sheep and he saw the burning bush, and the Bible says he went over to see what was going on because the, the bush was on fire, but it wasn't consumed. Uh -huh. And as he approached the the the, the, the book, I mean the, the, the bush. In fact, let's go all the way to Exodus chapter three. Let's read it for ourselves because we might as well. So if you're already in the Old Testament, just stay in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter three. Now, he is in the presence of God. 
Exodus chapter 3. And, and, and many of us have, uh, have, have gone through this in, in Sunday school and, and Bible study, so we, we know the story. Mm-hmm. But the Bible goes on to say in verse 1, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jephthah, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Am I in the right place? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he led the flock into the side, <clears throat> backside of the desert and came to a mountain of God, even the horror. Okay, so he's, he's tending the flock. Verse 2 says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not what? Mm-hmm. So what Moses saw was a burning bush. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not what? Mm-hmm. So God got his attention. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to say this. When God gets your attention, mm-hmm. you better look. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see him, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he says, what? Here I am. And he said, draw not hither. Right? In other words, stay right there. Don't get any closer. He says, put off your shoes from thy feet for thy place in which thou stand. What made it holy now was that God was there. He was there. Mm-hmm. That's what made it holy. Oh, yeah. Because God's presence was right there. Mm-hmm. And when you are in the presence of God, you, 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 you have to humble yourself. Mm-hmm. And look what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and he needed to humble himself. Mm-hmm. And, and, and look what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 6, Moreover, he says, I am the God of thy fathers. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's the introduction. The God of Abraham. Mm-hmm. The God of Isaac. Mm-hmm. The God of Jacob. And Moses did what? Oh, holy, holy. <laughs> Is the Lord Almighty. Okay, he hid his face because he knew that he was in the presence of a holy God. You know, the Bible says that we are holy. Everybody in this room who knows Jesus is holy. The Bible. And I'm gonna tell you, this this church is is is, is God's house. Amen. No man built this house. That's right. This house is built by God. So that means that this is holy ground right here. Mm-hmm. So so be careful when you're in the presence of God. Be, be careful when you're in the presence of His holiness. Amen. Be careful when, when you're around His people. <coughs> Amen. 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 And, 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 and the Bible says Moses hid himself for he was afraid to what? To look upon God. Mm-hmm. To even look upon God. Yeah. I, I don't know what's going on nowadays, but people have no reverence anymore for God. Yeah. They use his name in vain. Yeah. Like it means nothing. They say cuss words that, that be, begin with his name mm-hmm. and they curse him. Right. And that's one of the first words that they use. There, 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 there's no reverence of who he is and his holiness. But and, and, and you know what? Here's the thing, y'all. Although the, the people of this world, the, the people of this world don't recognize who God is, the angels above recognize who he is. And they glorify him. And in and, and, and his presence, they just say, holy. 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 Do you know that the, the Bible says that God chose every one of us in this room to be holy? Mm-hmm. In fact, the Bible says that this, it, 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 we don't have, you don't have to go there, but, but in, in, in Ephesians 1 4 it says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy 
and without blame before him in love. The expectation of God is that we should be holy. I mean, you've heard it before. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. So, so what does holiness mean for us? Right? The, 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 the holiness means to God that he is unique. That he deserves praise 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Because uh -huh. there's nobody like him. Uh -huh. How does holy look? When, when God says, be ye holy, what is he saying to us? What, is he, what, what does he want from us? What, what he wants from us is to be separate. Yeah. Okay? He wants us to be separate from the world. Holiness means to be sacred, to be separate, to be set apart. The expectation is, is that we are morally blameless in His presence. When, when, when we when we when we have communion on that table, in fact, mm -hmm. that table right there has a little note on it. It says, "Don't put anything on this table." <laughs> and now you see stuff on the table. <laughs> we, we see phones on the table. <laughs> We're trying to make it holy, right? So we right. just use it for God's use once in a while. <laughs> but that's the same thing we do. We do with God. Yeah. We take the things that are, are supposed to be for Him. Right. That are supposed to be holy, that are supposed to be separate, right. and use it for general use. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are holy. Mm -hmm. Marriage is holy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Holy matrimony. Yeah. Amen. 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 Remember what when, when God's when, when, holiness, right? When I want to be holy, there's things that are in me that I want taken out of me. Right. I want to separate myself from sin. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what God, when God looks at us, He says He wants us to be holy. What that means is to separate us, separate us from the things that are unholy, mm -hmm. the things that are of this world. He wants us to separate ourselves from, mm -hmm. to not be like them, to not hang around with, to not be contaminated mm -hmm. by the world. Mm -hmm. right? right? The expectation of God is we are to be used by Him and Him alone. When, when two people get married. You, you, that relationship is, is holy matrimony. In other words, that individual is for you and you alone. Amen. And the expectation is that you don't have to ever, ever share that person. Amen. Right? Amen. Right? Amen. Um, and it, 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 when I'm, when I'm, this is this is one of my quirks. Um, if, if, if I fix a plate and I eat it. And, and some people can eat after other people. I can't. <laughs> Once I eat it, it's mine. Yeah. Back up. <laughs> right? Because now it's holy to me. It's my plate. Right? So, so when people come in and say, well, let me touch that or taste that, I'm like, no. <laughs> so some people, some people will take a spoon and, and dip it in there anyway. And, and real oh, quick, it's cool. And, and they say, well, my, 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 my knife was clean, my, my, my fork was clean. I said, well, now this is unholy. Now you might, you can have it all now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Right. See, and that's what God is. God, God, God expects to have us to himself exclusively. Right. He wants us to be separate from the world. That's why you will never fit in. You will be holy or you'll be unholy. Mm -hmm. Right? One of the, uh, um, and, 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 and please follow me to 2 Corinthians, because I, I just want you to just see that the Word of God is, is, is the Word of God, and, and that is in your New Testament, so go yep. to the right. And, and the people who have computers are already there, waiting on the rest of y'all. So mm -hmm. hurry up. Amen. Amen. Hurry up. Chapter 6. Uh, 
I, I don't know. Some people can eat after each other. Each other you know, take somebody can. Some people can like yeah. lick an ice cream and then uh -uh. pass it on to the next person. <laughs> 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 Everybody I'm trying to figure out if, 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 if I'm hungry and had nothing to eat in the week, would you do it? Would I eat after somebody? I don't think so. I just I have to wait till the next round comes. <laughs> Some people share everything. You know, they share a glass of water. That you get. Uh, nope. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Okay. So that the expectation of God is that he don't share us. We're holy. We're set aside. We're separated for him. He doesn't want to share you. He doesn't want to share you. He doesn't want to share you with the world. He loves you. Just like you don't want to share, or at least I don't want to share. <laughs> right? We're separate. We're holy. We're sacred. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6. And look at it, look at verse 14, and, 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 and Paul's talking to the Corinthian church. He says, be ye not what? Together with believers. I know what unbelievers. What, what he's saying is believers and unbelievers are not supposed to be together. That's what he's saying. Don't yoke yourself together. Don't, don't, don't connect yourself with them. And he says, for what fellowship has righteousness with what? Right. And what uh, and what communion has light with what? God looks at it as, as light. He looks at it as, as darkness. Now we as people look at it in terms of gray. Right? We want to live in that gray area which is between light and darkness. Right? And and, and God says light or darkness. There is no gray. Because because the, the, to be to be in a gray area means that you can you can play a little bit on this side <laughs> and a little bit on this side, and then, which means you haven't made up your mind. Mm -hmm. Light and darkness can't be together. When you turn when when the light is turned on in a in a person's life, then darkness leaves. That's why when people get saved. And, and, and they get born again, all of a sudden they go like, whoa, I never realized that there was this. Yes. Because the light just got turned on and the darkness just got removed. Yeah. And, and, and if the light hasn't been turned on in your soul and your spirit, you're not born again. When, when the light gets turned on, you see things. Clearly. You understand. And look what the Bible says. The Bible says, what has a concord has what, and what concord has Christ with Baal? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their what? God. And they shall be my people. In other words, God says, You're mine. You're mine. Just like my plate. God says, that's mine. And I'm not sharing you with anybody. And, and look what the Bible says. And he tells, he tells the people, the, the, the people in Corinthians, wherefore come out from what? When you stay around people who are unbelievers, this is not what God wants to hang out with unbelievers. He says that's being unevenly yoked. And the Bible says, come out from amongst them and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will what? I will see you. And I and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons, sons and daughters of who? The Lord Almighty. You know, um, you look around. I'll give you an example, a beautiful example. Okay, this is a beautiful example. From, and, 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 and thank God I can pick on Chris. 
So he's got a look on his face like, oh, here it comes again. I ain't got a look. I already know what it is. I ain't going to turn over and look at it. But here's the deal. When he was yet still a baby, God made him separate. God's desire for Chris's life was always play to bring God glory. Amen. 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 And, 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 and from the time of, a, of an infant, Chris knows it. He, he, his father was a preacher. Yeah. His hands are God's hands. When he plays, when he plays for God, then it's, it's not work. It's just easy. So God has separated him, and he doesn't want to share Chris. Chris might like jazz. But God doesn't want him to play jazz. <laughs> now look at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it alone, y'all. <laughs> 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 you know you're in a loving church songs. Y'all know the love. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and God doesn't want to share you. You may have a, a job, but he wants to be your God. He wants to come first, not second. He wants to be first. And, 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 and why should God be first? First Peter, first Peter, first Peter. Why should God be first? First Peter, first Peter. First Peter chapter 1. Turn your Bibles. Look around. Chris ain't the only one that God has set aside. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Look around. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't think that God hasn't chosen you either. Yeah. Before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just Chris. Right? It's, it's, it's all of us. Everyone in this room is holy. And set aside. And that we should be used for God and God alone. And then when you use what God has given you for the world, then what you're doing is you're becoming unequally yoked with the world. First Peter. Holy means to be separate. Uh -uh, and this is and as, as you turn your Bibles down. You know, think of yourself as um, as an instrument used by God. And that our lives should reflect his glory. And look what, and, 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 when, and when Peter finally got it, this is what Peter said. <coughs> when Peter finally understood who God was and, 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 and how that, that God is holy, Peter writes this in verse 13. He says, Wherefore, gird up your loins in your mind and be sober. In other words, make up your mind right now, today, in this church. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you as a revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your word don't go back to what you used to be it says but as he has called you is what the person who called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of it says conversation, but that means behavior. 
Everything that we ought to do should be holy. Why? Because he who called us is holy. is holy. The Bible says, because it is written, what? Be ye holy, for I am holy. And understand this, and if you call on, of, on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's word, pass the time of your sword joining here with what? Fear? Look, look why we should live our life holy. For in so much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. In other words, the, the word redeem means bought back. Uh -huh. And let me just put it this way. If it wasn't for God buying us back, we would still be in slavery to what we were in before. Uh -huh. It'll, let me just say that again. If you're free today, it's not you're not free because you freed yourself. Uh -huh. You're free because somebody has the keys to sin and death. Uh -huh. And they let you loose. And if it wasn't, if, where would we be right now if it wasn't for God letting us loose? Well, I had to hide my wallet from Chris. front. Put it in my front pocket. If it wasn't for who? That's why we always say this room, but God. But God, if it wasn't for God. And, and some of us are still living like we lived when we were still lost in the world. But God says, come out from among that mess. Be ye holy. For I am holy. It's time to be holy. Because time is, is, is wrapping up. And, and here we are still doing the same thing we did when we was in our 20s. You know, they used to tell me, snap out of it. What does that mean? Wake up. All right? Wake up. Can't you see the signs of the times? I, I was over at Kroger's and I was just buying some things. And, and uh, I think this lady had on a cross. And, and so anybody has a cross, I want to see what you're wearing it for. Is it jewelry? Is it decoration? Or do you love Jesus? So I said, I said, hey, hey, are you blessed? And as soon as she said, yeah, I'm blessed. I said, oh, praise the Lord. I said, I'm a Christian too. And then she said, she said, she said, do you see what's going on? Do you see the signs of the times? Do you see that everything that the Bible says was going to happen is now happening? Everywhere, all over the world, simultaneously at the same time. The same. So what does that mean? That means the coming of the Lord is approaching us. So then as a church, we want to be without spot or wrinkle when he comes. Amen. Here's the thing. If God came right now, when I said that, people would come like, <laughs> like they were scared, like, oh, right now, oh, my God. You see, you shouldn't be looking at me like that. You should be like, if he comes, I've been Amen. ready for the last 15 years. Amen. I'm just waiting on him. But if you look at me, what if he comes right now? You're, well, then that means it's too late. The Bible says that we were not redeemed with corruptible things. The Bible says, what redeemed us? Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ. In other words, what redeemed us, what brought us back, what freed us, was the blood of who? Jesus Christ. As a lamb without blemish and without sin. Let me just say this. The expectation of God is that you and I be holy. Mm -hmm. What that really means is to separate ourselves from sin. Mm -hmm. To separate ourselves from uncleanness. To separate ourselves from the world. To separate ourselves from people who are not mm -hmm. believers. Sometimes you got to let your friends go. Mm -hmm. They'll just drag you back. Here's the deal. God's coming. And when he comes, we want to be ready. Yeah. Mostly all the sermons that God has me to preach is about him coming. How many times do we have to preach the same sermon to be holy? For I am holy. There was, a, there was a sermon about uh, not to fornicate. 
So all these sermons is about getting rid of sin, getting rid of sin in your life, cleaning yourself up, right? That's what these sermons are about. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. You know, uh, we are called the bride of Christ. Okay, amen? amen? Imagine being in a wedding. Amen? And everybody's dressed in white, pure white. And, 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 and they're playing the music, you know, uh, here comes the bride, here comes the bride, right? And, and, and the bridegroom is in the back. And, and, and everybody's sitting down in the chairs and everybody's waiting for her to come and so it's come in and, and the groom is standing up there shaking and nervous and sweating. <laughs> I don't know why men sweat. <laughs> and, and she's got herself, she's got uh, 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 all of her bridesmaids and everything and, and people helping her and she's beautiful and she's got this beautiful dress on and it's long and it's, 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 it's trailing and and, 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 and just imagine if, if she says, well, if she says, well, I, I just want to have a little sip of coffee before I go out. And she takes some coffee and she spills the wrong drinks. And she has to come in. What is she going to want? What is she going to want to do with that spill thing? What is she going to want to do with that thing? She's going to try to do what? Because she is going to get married. <laughs> But she, what, what did she want to do? And that's the same thing with us with sin. When, if, 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 if when Christ comes back, we're going to want to hide that stain. Whatever sin it is, that's what we're going to, you're going to hide. And imagine standing up there in front of everybody. And you get married and you got that stain on you. And how you would feel. That's good preaching, Pastor. Yeah. Amen. Just 
place of vacation and you head for the journey home, Lord. We ask that you be there to receive us. That our name is firmly printed in the book of life. And you stretch your arms out and say, come my child. Oh, I know as a Christian and you believe in God, you know that the best is yet to come. And Lord, we yearn Thank <laughs> you. 